Welcome back to the second part of good game design, a good boss fight. And now we come to the second part, which is about the designer. Still no coding. This is just for you. If you don't know how to set it up, just to see how the process can look like. And of course, uh, everybody does it a little bit different, but I think this is a solid basis to start from. So basically to recap very, very quickly, this is the fight we want to copy from the game Astalon. Um, tears of the earth and then here we uh, in the first video we just analyzed it so we went into the head of the game designer so how is this whole thing structured etc etc and now we come to the second part which is basically this i basically remade this fight of course with the sprite available and then we do something similar and then of course we got our popping up and then specific phases so basically if we are full hp then we are doing the regular thing and for example if you reduce it then boom we go into well different kind of states and then we can of course do a little bit more for example we do the spike thing or the balls and all that stuff and then this is then in the third video which i'm gonna do tomorrow in a stream because that project is huge it's really really big and therefore I'm not going to bother to do it in one, two, three, four, twenty 20 videos. And we, I just do it in one big swoop and then you can uh, bump in and just check out how it looks like because I guess that would be a little bit overwhelming. But let's go into the part of the designer because what is the designer? Hey, he or she needs to get the assets so we can actually look at something. So the first thing we need to, of course, to import them. Um, this video will from you require that you understand how to import that stuff so basically create and then you do a sprite and then of course if you like it for example you, you have a little sprite editor and you can basically do your own things in here which is pretty practical so I really dig that system so this is pretty cool and this is how I made a few of those sprites so for example I just copied let's say and made this one in a few seconds i don't know a few seconds uh, two three minutes and boom i created a nine slice so this is what you're going to learn later on i guess we're going to do this in this video and then um, i just uh, made this and then sliced it up with a nine slice so this is one of the newest features and then boom uh, these uh, corners will be repeated and then for example if you want to stretch it actually put one in there so and then for example if you stretch it it does it correctly this is the cool thing about nine slash so um here i'm gonna give you a really 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 uh, a fast crash course into the game uh the not designer but the graphics guy so basically the artist yeah we <laughs> this is just basically the artist and then a few things which you can uh, put into the game and then you need it so if, the first thing we need first of all a tile set for that we need a few sprites so for example what do i have i have the ball which is just flying around let's see if i still got this running yes and then the spikes i remade them on myself then the explosion after the, the the boss is dead then the fireball not part of the uh, well thingy here and then it ties and of course the boss animated and then there are different kind of options how to create those things or get those uh, sprites from another place and of course some icons so quickly we'll go over that for for example for that i just have this is what i showed you the nine slice so basically this is what i did in the edit image and then boom i drew it myself and then if you go into the nine slice thing and activate it boom then you got your slices and then you can of course drag them where you want them and then boom this is how it's being then dragged i guess this is the preview Yes, it is. This is a preview thing. So this is the minimum value, maximum, doesn't really matter. So as you can see, you can check it out how it does look like. And then well, we can play with that. So here you can do that manually with, but I just uh, drag those lines and then it is being sliced correctly in those spots. And then of course, then it's repeated correctly. So this is how the nine slice works. Yeah, I know this is pretty fast. And then I just imported my tile set. So this is how it looks like um a little bit bigger so you can actually check it out basically this is a 16 by 16 setup and then here i just made it in two three colors so basically i have the light color regular color and the dark one 
and so we can emulate the good old 8-bit style and this is the same for the almost the same for the background the background just have two colors so a light color and then a darker one and then for example we can just input that on the black background and boom you got a background kind of color and a foreground for the active things and then the other stuff well we're gonna see so for example um, here this is the stuff which will come up at the very beginning when we start the game so this is what we can put just basically on an asset layer so basically asset layer is if you just want to drag and drop sprites into the room like that and then you want to do something please don't do that with the tiles like this this is not what it's meant for and then later on i just um push that layer a little bit up and then we got the first effect of the thing which is going up so basically here what i do for this wall or for this bubble bath here i just say edit image and then boom fill it up with the sprite editor in here easy peasy stuff so basically this is the easy stuff and then for example if i want to have my uh, tile set made so basically a tile set is here a layer also which you can find on the left side for example for the ground or for the what is that the background and here we just use the tile set which i'm going to show you quickly how to have one and then for example we just i don't know select this and then we can draw it on the screen which is pretty practical and very efficient concerning uh, what kind of memory usage you are having so basically tile sets are always a good thing to have and of course if you just paint stuff um, it's definitely easier to do than for example do that on the asset layer where you just have it per sprite but here you just take specific pieces then you repeat them easy peasy stuff so where is the tile set here for example you just create you where are your tile set tile set here boom and then you define what kind of a grid you are having so how it is being uh, well selected on and of course one little thing as you can see here this one is cut out always leave the first tile out because i guess a game maker studio doesn't need it to be like this so here this one is the only exception the other stuff is free to go and as you can see boom um you just say hey what kind of uh, sprite you want to have you just input it there and then uh, automatically everything is running as it should be so this is the easy part so boom i just imported my sprite which i showed you before and then we got that set up so the next thing what do we need well a few icons i made them myself so here once again uh, nothing too special so basically it's just 16 or 32 by 32 let's check it out basically i just choo -choo -choo. why do i do this because it is easier to identify a few things visually so for example if uh, you put a lot of objects on the outside i don't know i just put a few of them always on the uh, outside so you can uh, know what's going on so for example if i input input a shader a control object or other objects and then you got all those things if they for example don't have any sprite attached to them so let's say we create an object something something and then you input a few of them and they are different kind of objects and for example let's put them on it here and here and here and here it is a, it, it doesn't really make a difference because everything is running then the same but maybe you don't know what is this one what is this one of course you can select them then here there is a little preview so you see ah these are these guys but for a much much quicker more convenient way this is what i do i just create a few icons which i'm just uh, well having in my sprites folder of course folder structure is up to you how you can how you want to do this and then i say like hey i want to have an icon for control objects one for example here one which is controlling the spikes later on in the stream then one for example for the screen check one for the shader which i'm going to input and for example one for tester and so on so here um, this is a well or let's say a very visual approach and then if you put things in the room then you see them for example here for the boss of course here you already have one and for the other stuff too but i think this is helping much 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 um, to make the stuff a little bit easier to check out so nine minutes in wow longer than expected so here these are all the sprites so for example here this one i drew i guess in five minutes or whatever so here as you can see nothing special but later on we will animate of course there are a few other ones which are a little bit more complex 
So here, this one is actually animated. This is not what I did. This is one by the Animus. So how can you, for example, animate, let's say, easier objects? There is, for example, one program, maybe you heard about it. It's called JuiceFX. And for example, you can do uh, lots of things. And of course, you can have some presets, drift. So here, a lot of, lot of, lot of things you can actually do. And it's visually very, very pleasingly done. And it's, by the way, made in Game Maker Studio. But of course, this is a commercial license. So here, yeah. But of course, here I have a little surprise for you. This is called, not called Spooky Ghost. No, 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 no. How is that program called? One second, I have to check it out. Uh, nope. It's actually called Spooky Ghost. Ah, okay. So uh, <laughs> this is um, a free software. So this is similar to JuiceFX. So if you wanna, if you don't wanna spend any money and you wanna do some animations here, for example, this is very, very similar to it. But of course, as you can see, it is a little bit more less visual. So here, you can do basically the same stuff as you can do here. But of course, here, this is a little bit more. Well, let's call it more designer uh, approached but this one is technically basically the same and here you can even do more you can do even some more animation with that so this tool is definitely more powerful so here and it is free so you can check it out of course links in the description below for both those animation tools so let's close them because we don't really need and the next thing you're thinking okay but i need some sprites and i want to get some first of all for free because if you are starting as a designer oh, for your for first game you're thinking mm, i ain't got the money to spend which is totally fine so for that you have one of my favorite sites which is game uh, opengameart.org and here you can just look for i don't know x Lotion, let's go and here you can find tons of stuff um, not just graphics but uh, sound effects and so on and there um, let's say for example this uh, explosion I actually used here and here it says hey what kind of license and stuff and this is very important because sometimes people just upload stuff and you're thinking hey cool this is I can use this no 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 just be careful about this stuff and here it just says hey CC uh, by three it just means like hey mention me this is my stuff, but you can use it even commercially in your product or project or whatever. Sweet. So we just take that one, download and say like, hey, thumbs up. Alrighty, the next thing which you can use is itch.io. You just go under game assets and here you find, I don't know, tons of things. Um, most of the time, let's say half or more than half you can buy, but the prices are very, very, very neat. So here you won't get <laughs> completely robbed if you buy some stuff. So here, itch.io, it's definitely a good sign. It's a little bit faster than uh, open game art because here this is non-commercial in any kind of way. Here you can just take and uh, take that stuff and boom, and here people actually sell their assets or sometimes they share them. So here, pretty sweet, but a lot of times, I don't know, let's go for example here, we just go in there, you can just download, but okay as you can see there are no um, well restrictions is it commercial is it non-commercial can you use it can't you here you have to ask a lot of times for the per person who's actually putting that in there and then the next thing would be the unity store which is the most expensive in my opinion here the prices are just really 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 high for 2d graphics so if you are selling i guess unity store so Unity Asset Store is definitely not a bad idea if you want to make some bucks, but this is the most expensive one of all of them. But of course here, another alternative. Here, one thing which is pretty sweet, so Humble Bundle, if you haven't heard about this, besides buying some video games and then feeling good about that because you bought it for charity or whatever, then you can actually get some, let's say for example here, as you can see, you can um, grab some bundles and sometimes they are having pretty sweet bundles let's go for six for one buck you just get all that stuff this one was i guess for five or six bucks so here you can actually grab from time to time really really good stuff so humble bundle from time to time it's not a bad thing to check out because here you can get pretty decent deals for a good buck and of course the next thing maybe you want to do your own graphics and you're thinking like sweet 
I just want to edit my own stuff. Then once again, you can use the inbuilt sprite editor. Very, very popular uh, is also, uh, what is it called? A sprite. But of course, this is commercial. I guess older versions are free. Not sure about this one. So here, a lot of people actually like this one for animation. So this is pretty cool as it seems also. Or this is one of uh, my new favorites, which is Affinity Photo. You basically here, what is that saying? 27 bucks. Damn, I bought it for 50. Um, <laughs> so as you can see here, this is basically Photoshop, but you buy the license once and then it's yours. It's not like the BS, which uh, uh, well Adobe is doing. And they are really, really asking for high prices. And then, for example, once you are not paying for the subscription, then you're pretty much locked out. Really, 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 really bad practices and that. Therefore, not using any um, well products for from um, well Adobe anymore. So therefore, dislike the practice. Buy. I'm just going for uh, good deals and for let's say other products. And of course, there are free ones. So for example, you can go for GIMP, which is free. So here on all on Linux on uh, or Mac OS or Windows, it is free if you, for example, want to use a license like this. Or for example, you have MS Paint for Windows or for the Mac, it's Paintbrush. So here, once again, a lot of software, which is normally most of that stuff is free. So you can just check it out and use it as a designer. And of course, then you can well, do whatever you like. Alrighty. Um, this is so much for all the options. Of course, you can have a friend that does, for example, the, the graphics stuff and then you are the programmer. So here um, a team works definitely best or you can even uh, hire people, which if you are a small team, I wouldn't recommend because this can get quite expensive at some point. So here uh, starter kits, boom, here or here or here. And of course, well, once again, a team is better than the solo uh, thing. Alrighty, hopefully that was of interest to you. So hopefully I am, yeah, I'm almost 18 minutes in. So this is quite a long video. And then tomorrow I'm going to do the stream for well, the whole project here, which is quite extensive. So here, tons of objects, tons of control stuff, tons of scripts, but hopefully you will uh, a few of you will check it out and see like, ah, okay, this is how you can approach that thing. Of course, you need to understand basics. So this is not, this will be very, very fast and not too beginner friendly. So here, uh, just be aware of that. So see you tomorrow if you like. So I guess about five or six o'clock uh, universal thing, something, something time uh, minus two. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.